everyone, welcome back to another episode of Columbia City. This is episode 20, and today we're going to be working on a really cool project that's been requested a decent amount in the comments, which is an underground light rail station. Um, so this light rail station is going to be connected to the line that sort of goes um, all the way down to the water, and then... Um, I, I honestly don't know what else is going to happen with it. I've I haven't really uh, thought out uh, all of the light rail lines uh, in the city quite yet, but uh, this is sort of where this station is going to be situated, um, and sort of what we're doing in this episode is going to be situated around here. One thing that happened though is I somehow lost like. A lot of footage like I lost an hour of footage which was like the core of the detailing I was doing this episode which is really sad um, I actually still have the footage for the main actually no, the main detailing around the station uh, and the direct areas around the station I still have that and you'll be able to see that but the rest of it I do lose uh, which is sort of sad um, but I, I recorded some other stuff where we actually placed a new biggest skyscraper in downtown and we worked on um, placing some signs and like logos on top of the skyscrapers, which I've sort of mixed on it. I'm going to need your opinions in the comments, um, but we'll get to that a little later. Right now, we're just working on the underground light rail station. I don't really know of anything in Seattle that's specifically like this where you've got the, the glass top to the station. I know Seattle obviously has a subway. But uh, I, I don't know how, I, I guess the, the subway is sunken light rail. I don't know where that fits in uh, in the rail hierarchy. Um, but in Seattle, the, the light rail goes underground uh, once it hits downtown. And yeah, it, it, it's functionally just a subway. And the, um, the, the rest of the rail is above ground light rail. And that's basically what we're going to have throughout basically the entire city. This is the only like sunken portion of light rail that we're going to have, um, simply because it's really annoying to work with these LRT networks and get them to sync underground well. And so I've actually used, um, so I basically in making the transportation system for Columbia City, I've changed my mind a ton of times and it's just been a completely confusing mess because I've been trying to balance a bunch of different things that I want to do. Um, cause I want to have, I, I, ideally all of downtown would just be a subway, right? But, um, it, it's sort of annoying to do that with LRT networks. Another thing to note is that I can't put, like if I used Metro overhaul mod networks in the middle of, um, my, like my, my avenues, that wouldn't really work. Um, it would be totally makeshift and I don't know if I'd be able to manage that. On the other hand, like the LRT networks work perfectly, like that's what they're meant to do in the middle of the avenues. And then another thing I wanted to note is when I was talking about Metro Overhaul, like I think like five or six episodes ago, this is a while ago, um, I had said that Metro Overhaul was lagging my game, which it turned out I don't think it was. I th it was a, it was a, I'm still figuring out what it was, but I fixed it after I moved, I removed Metro Overhaul mod. Um, after removing some other mods, but basically I don't think it was Metro Overhaul. And then um, Jay basically left a comment saying it was sort of irresponsible of me to be like talking about a mod causing lag like that when I haven't fully troubleshooted it, which I I'm sorry I just got to addressing this because uh, I haven't really been talking about like transportation in Columbia City. I just wanted to wait until I finally did. But yeah, I definitely, to all the Metro Overhaul mod authors, I apologize for that. I will not do that again. And I've learned my lesson in not speculating about mods uh, to a great degree in my videos. I'll try to figure it out on my own and then on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, so I, I won't do that again and definitely uh, apologize for that to Metro Overhaul mod um, authors. And yeah, definitely, I mean, if, if you're like looking for an overground Metro uh, for your city, I mean, Metro Overhaul's pretty easily the correct choice. I mean, you've got the vanilla uh, above grounds um, Metro now, but it, has like there, there's a graphic uh by bad peanut um or I, I don't know who made it but bad peanut posted it and it, it just basically shows vanilla overground metro versus metro overhaul mod and yeah so if you're like sort of on the fence between the two just just use metro overhaul mod folks uh, yeah once again huge apology to metro overhaul mod authors for that i think it's like my third time saying that but like i, I do feel definitely very bad like this is one of my more embarrassing moments because like I, I honestly don't feel like I'm recording a video that's going out to like multiple thousands of people 
whenever I'm recording, I'm just just recording, like I I'm talking. I've recorded hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos. I used to make Minecraft videos, they're all private now. But like I've recorded YouTube videos for so long that I'm just sort of, sort of yeah, I'm sort of desensitized to the fact that they go out to a lot of people, which is usually a good thing because it makes it easier to record. But I definitely can't be speculating about mods like that, um, like sort of in front of such a big audience. So once again, huge, huge apology to Metro Overhaul Mod Authors. But anyway, let's move on from that. I've been talking about it for a couple minutes now. I, I think it was worthy of like a couple minutes of talking though. Anyway, moving forward, I'm adding signs to buildings because they sort of look cool. They also look a little bit weird, um, like having the red signs on the gray buildings is, it looks a little bit off, but I think I just have to get used to it. I'll show you what they look like in game in the live play, and maybe you can give me another opinion because I'm not quite sure how I like them. Uh, some signs work better than others, but yeah, that, that big skyscraper on the left uh, was actually suggested in a comments. I forget what it's called, um, but it's from New York City. The person who suggested it basically said that it would make my skyline look less, le uh, less boxy, which I totally agree with. Like, we only have a couple buildings that aren't um, very boxy on the skyline. One's the Observation Tower, the Sky Tower from Auckland. One is that tower on the way right of the screen that it's actually out of frame there um but it, yeah there it's it's on the way right there it's that like redder building i don't know how to describe it it's got the pyramid thing at the top and then there's um this one on the left now which is actually going to be the amazon headquarters because you know seattle um so i put an amazon logo on that um so i mean Hopefully you like its placement there. I definitely do. There's also a really cool lineup because it's at this uh, intersection. I'll show you later in the episode, but it lines up with one of the avenues perfectly and it's going to make, make for some um, really good cinematics uh, as we move forward. And I've been trying to do that more. Like the Sky Tower almost lines up with a pretty big avenue that, um, like, as you might be able to see over there, um, that goes into the core of the downtown, but it doesn't quite line up with it. Um, but that was just sort of inevitable because I would have to totally uh, destroy the entire road layout for that to work, um, which I might do in the future, who knows. But uh, that avenue is already a little bit like weird. It shifts its location, like it, it's not a perfect grid. It's weird, I don't know. Point is, try to get some lineups in the city, but um, not gonna have tons and tons of them. Um, anyway, so we are just continuing to add signs here. Like I'm just adding all of these, these, these are all by Sven Berlin or like at least most of them. Um, and they're, they're pretty cool. I, I like them. Some are big enough to put on the top of these buildings. Some are not. So I just have to choose the ones that are, uh, for these buildings. And the, like, there's a huge selection though. If you, if you have any ideas for different logos that I could put on these buildings, definitely send me your uh, your idea in the comments because I'd love to hear because I'm just placing the, the logos that I have, but I'm sure there are more that are big enough to put up there uh, on those buildings on the workshop. So I think we've moved on now from the signs though. Now we're working on placing planters and stuff, doing a bunch of the general detailing that we've been doing uh, recently that we did in the last episode. I'm sorry that this is also included in this episode, but I literally lost an hour of footage, which really sucked. Uh, I will definitely show you what we built in that hour though. Um, it, it's really cool and I'm really happy with it and I'm so sad that I lost it I just looked at my recording thing and it said that I had only been recording for like 20 minutes And I'm gonna know it's been way longer than 20 minutes and it turned out. I just didn't Unpause my recording um, like a genius. So that's where we're at um, Anyway, I'm just placing more rocks behind these buildings. I think I did that last episode somebody said that uh, they have something like that in uh, I think it was Wellington, New Zealand, they said, where it's just the the, the vegetation is totally overtaken downtown. Um, it might have been a different city they were mentioning, though. Uh, but I, I definitely like it. I think it just adds character to the city, no matter how realistic it is. And I'm just using some of these generic trees by Lost Gecko and a couple other trees. Like, I used a live oak there just to cover up some imperfections in the, uh, the slope. And... I'm just placing various planters and stuff here. Like, this is just the 
main detailing that I do a, a lot of the time for these neighborhoods that just have to be detailed and, and it's it's pretty hard to find the right balance here because I still feel like I'm detailing too much in these neighborhoods but then when I don't detail more than this I feel like I haven't put in enough effort and they look too unrealistic so finding that balance is really hard especially because I want Columbia City to be huge like I want it to be enormous but I also really want like this is I, I want to put everything I've got into this city because uh, this is like my favorite project that I've worked on so far and I just want it to be really good basically so because uh, like I mean New Windsor is a little bit outdated in terms of a lot of the stuff I did in it uh, Columbia City is very much up to date and it is yeah like even though I started it like a year ago I'm still extremely happy with basically everything I've built here and I want to just basically continue that uh, as we move forward and just put tons of effort into it because when downtown is fully done and we've got the waterfront done and everything around all of downtown done and we have Pike Place done because uh, we're going to build that and I've got a spot for it um, it's going to be glorious I cannot wait so yeah that's why I'm just trying to put a decent amount of detail into downtown but uh, I won't be able to do this everywhere, and I'm still trying to figure out if the amount of detail I am putting into downtown is too much, because, yeah, it, it's, once again, it's really hard to find that balance for a city like Columbia City that you want to be really big, but you also want to be, like, your best city yet, and, yeah, it, it's it's a hard balance to strike, and I, I'm sure a bunch of you guys know what I'm talking about from, from your own cities, but... Uh, another thing I'm trying to do is add a sort of uniform set of roadside trees in certain roads. Like, a lot of these uh, trees that I'm using are, like, uh, it'll change from block to block, and I don't really like that. If you remember last episode, we made that main light rail avenue just have the younger London plane trees uh, absolutely everywhere. And it looked really good because it was very uniform and you could see going down the entire avenue, the same tree. And when we actually have light rails going down that avenue, it'll be really cool. Um, but yeah, it's just finding uniform and it can't be totally uniform because if I just use one tree as my roadside tree for the entire city, it will not look good. Uh, cause you can't just do that. Um, but I'll, I'll have different types of trees trying to make it look sort of uniform block to block but not too uniform uh that's another thing i'm trying to balance here and yeah like i'm just basically trying to fill out these blocks this area back here behind these buildings i don't actually add those rocks and stuff i do try to detail this and i add a retaining wall as you can see working with these height differences is a lot of fun though i, I will say that like it's not easy but when you make these um, back lots with the retaining walls and stuff, it's it's pretty cool. And we've got like cement uh, cement pallets here and then tanks and stuff and then piles of junk, um, various stuff back here. But like just doing it on different, um, different heights is, yeah, it's fun. It's annoying, but it's fun and it's pretty rewarding. So if you guys haven't built a city on um, a hill, I recommend it. Uh, it's a challenge, but it is very rewarding. And I'm like, if you saw the the first cinematic in the entire episode, uh, with all those suburbs uh, just on the hill, like it, it looks really cool to build on a hill. And yeah, just try it if you haven't already. It, it, it's worth it, uh, at least to try for one city. Uh, you don't have to do it everywhere, but. Trying to build on a hill in one city is a good challenge. I don't think, other than Calavera Beach, really, I, I don't think I've really done something like this, building on a hill to this degree. Like, New Windsor is obviously uh, on some uh, terrain differences, but this is, like, a totally different um, thing, and it's still not even as crazy you can, as you can go. You can go really crazy with your um, gradients and make them really steep in your cities, um, and I've barely even begun to try to do that in Columbia City and it's still difficult so uh yeah anyway we're sort of coming to the end of the time lapse here uh once again we've got a bunch of stuff in game that you didn't see because I lost all of the footage to my pause button and I will go over and show you that right now and also show you just what I have as an idea for the light rail uh, in the rest of the city all right we're in game uh we've been hit by a car uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to say here, except 
this is pretty epic. I, I love this. Like, this, this build, I... Like, just something about the buildings here and everything. Like, it's starting to feel like a city. Um... Apologies for the FPS. We're getting, like, 6 FPS right now. But... That is just awesome. I love it. Um, if you go over here, you can see the, uh, the entrances to the metro stations. Or the, the metro station. There's one on this side of the road right there. And there's also one on this side of the road over here. And uh, it will be pretty cool when we have the light rail going through here. And we've got this big old church here, which I'm going to detail in a future episode. But this is the area that I built uh, in that portion that I lost, um, the, where I lost the footage. It's just this uh, historical district over here that uh, sort of hasn't been upzoned much. Um, and is just, it, it's, you know, like five to ten stories maybe. Um, but it's all like older buildings that are just going to stay here. And they're uh, sort of, ooh cars look cars in the garage that is cool um let's go around this corner lag uh yeah this is a cool courtyard back here i like this it's got like yeah these row houses are pretty awesome i'm not gonna lie um i don't know if they're realistic for pacific northwest but i like them Okay, let's, uh, let's head up here and just take a bird's eye view of this, I guess. Um, yeah, this is, it, it like, so, something about this. I just really love what we built here. We also built this block over here in that portion that I, uh, lost, where we have got this, the Peabody Hotel, and then just a bunch of other stuff. And, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking like a city. Like, if you look at this, like, everything in this... Right here, everything is basically detailed. Okay, before I forget, I want to show you the transit plans that I have for the city. Okay, be before that though, uh, this is a thing now. This is the Mount Fuji asset, um, which was uploaded in the workshop. It is, I mean, okay, it's like I haven't, let's, let's just assume that I managed to terraform this so that it, it uh, actually looks reasonable. Just give me a second. Uh, this is an old save, so I'm not going to save this. It doesn't really matter. Let's say I terraform it like this, um, and then I... Ooh, that's not... that's not right. Let's do it like that. Whatever. Let's just... we'll flat... we'll s smooth the terrain out, uh, and just assume this looks good. Um, and... Basically, it would look something like... Th okay, just I ignore... ignore the ridiculous cliffs there. It would look something like that in the background. That's cool, and I, I've been talking about how I want a stratovolcano in Columbia City for a while now. I think we finally have our answer, and it looks absolutely glorious. So I think that's going to be a thing. Just give me a little time to figure it out, but it's going to be in that corner of the map because it's already sort of elevated. We're not going to build the national park in that corner of the map. We'll probably have to build it in like this end of the map here, which I think is a better place to do it anyway because we've got all these cool rivers and stuff. But, um, yeah, we'll figure that out. It'll look cool. But, um, I do want to show you the light rail plans that I have currently, um, because it got a little complicated. So, I actually have to remove the Sydney Harbor Bridge here, as you guys mentioned, because it's not tall enough to accommodate... Like, this is a really short ship. We're gonna have taller ships than that. It's not tall enough to accommodate the ships. So, we're gonna have to probably remove it, almost definitely, because we're gonna have a pretty big harbor. And we'll probably add, like, the Bay Bridge by J there, or something like that. We'll figure it out. But point is, the light rail... So, these are the lines we have right now. Um, we have this one line that goes sort of on the freeway here. And that's the one we were working on this episode. It goes into downtown. It goes underground. And uh, goes under the waterfront. Uh, I, uh, yeah, like, I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. But uh, the... It'll probably go to some sort of population center over there, and then it'll extend basically under the waterfront this way, this way, and then to some sort of population center over here. And then we have a light rail that goes um, through downtown right here. I don't know where it's going to terminate. Probably some sort of population center over there, and then a population center over here, the Portland-inspired area, 
across the bridge. I was gonna have commuter rail go over here as well, but I realized this is more like an island here, and it doesn't really make sense to have commuter rail go over here. It's just gonna terminate in some sort of station in downtown. Uh, we'll figure that out when the time comes though. And then we have this line that sort of loops around here in downtown and then goes out to what will be the airport. And then ignore this line here because it went from what will be a population center over here to a population center over here. But it sort of doesn't make sense because you have to transfer to get to downtown. And I don't think they would spend that kind of money on a project like this um, that doesn't that you're required to transfer to get into downtown. I don't know. I feel like they'd probably invest in different projects. So we'll have some sort of trolley bus there or something. I don't know. Um, just ignore that. But point is, we have three main light rail lines. The one going to the airport, the one going from here to something like here, and the one going from what will be the Portland area over in the mountains here. That's the plan. Commuter rail, I don't know where the station will be. I think it's going to be somewhere like where um, King Street Station is in Seattle. So like around this area. But we'll see. That's the plan right now. We're also going to have a pretty extensive trolley bus network that's going to work itself up into this end of the city over here. I've also, it's also been suggested a lot to build the University of Washington here in Columbia City, which we will definitely do when we build the main university. That's going to be what it's inspired by because the geography is perfect. It's in Seattle. It's, it's like a very, it's got a very diverse array of buildings and layouts and stuff. I like it. I will be building something like that in Columbia City at some point. But, um, but yeah. Hopefully that's like a, just for newer viewers that like, cause I've talked about this before, but there have been some changes. Hopefully that's a good view of like what we've got going on here. Ignore the fact that these buildings are gone. I, I messed up initially placing the um, Mount Fuji asset, but yeah, the Mount Fuji asset, once we, uh, once we get rid of, yeah, like I want to say this terraforming is ridiculous, ignore it. But having that in the background will totally complete the Pacific Northwest look and it is just perfect. So. I mean, if you're building a city like this, definitely download that um, if you haven't already. Anyway, uh, this is it. This is Columbia City so far. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Helps out a ton. Uh, and subscribe if you're new around here. Hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever I upload a video so you never miss an upload. Uh, you, If you want to fly around in Columbia City, you could grab the save game and support me over on Patreon. You could also get access to episodes early. Um, you could get your name in the credits at the end of the video. And yeah, I mean, you could just support me over on Patreon. Definitely appreciated. Um, but let's see, follow me on Twitter. I've been posting a bunch of music stuff on there recently. I posted a ranking of every single Beatles song. It's currently pinned if you're watching this video soon after it comes out. So you can go you fight me on that one. Um, I, I, there are actually a couple things that are sort of wrong there, but um, you can if, if you if you like if you respond to it and note the things that are wrong that I know are wrong, I will respond to you. Point is, it, it, it's there. I do stuff like that on Twitter. It's fun. Um, and then on Instagram, I I currently my phone is broken and I won't post anything to Instagram, so I haven't been posting there in the past couple days. But still follow me over there. That's in the description. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. It is rainy in Columbia City. It won't be rainy in the cinematics, sorry, but um, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. <laughs>